This video is about defining custom wall element types. The element type determines which building material layers exist inside a wall. Here is a wall from our sample house, which contains many layers, as we saw in the introductory video. There will be quite a lot of repetition in defining all these layers, so please navigate by using the bookmarks in the video description if you are looking for a specific part of the video. Now I'll open a different file which contains no ArcFrame objects. This is because I'll create the exact same element type that the sample house file already has, so the pre-existing element type would cause some trouble with naming and so forth. If you're following my steps with the sample files, it's best to open the architect model, which contains only Archicad objects. So now let's go to the element tool. The element types can be set at the top of this window. And this drop-down list contains all the element types I have defined myself and saved to disk. And below, here are some template types. But instead of choosing either of those, I'll click Own Element Types and create a new type. In this window, you can edit pre-existing types or load types from an XML file. But we will create a new type by clicking New. First, let's give the type an ID, for example, Demo External. This is the name that will appear in the list of custom element types. Then I'll set 42 by 173 to the element stamp field. This stamp will be visible in elevations. For example, here is a screenshot of one. Then let's set the base down field to looked from in to out. Then we can start adding layers to this element. Because we are looking at the wall from inside to outside, the topmost layer on this list will be the interior layer. So let's start by adding the gypsum boarding. To do so, I'll first click either Add Before or Add After. Which one you pick doesn't matter because this is the first layer. And then I'll click Edit slash New Type. Here at the top we can choose from layer types that I've created previously. But now, let's make a completely new type by clicking New. For Based On, let's choose Boarding. The layer ID is the name under which the layer type will be listed in this list. And I'll set my layer ID to Gypsum 13. Next, we'll go through these settings. First, I'll choose an ARCHICAD layer which I want the Gypsum boards to be created on. A drop-down list opens up where I can choose from pre-existing layers. I'll place the board on the layer AF board interior. The next field determines whether a diagonal line will be displayed across each individual board. The line can help you distinguish the edges of boards, and it looks like this. I'll display the line by putting one here. Then I'll set the thickness to 13 millimeters. If we have multiple layers of boarding, we can use the overlap attribute to, for example, determine that boards in different layers should not have their edges on the same wall stud. To avoid having the edges at the same spot, I'll put one here. The boarding strategies also affect where the edges of the boards will be placed. You can check the help file for more information about different options. The board type ID will be shown in listings and elevations. I'll set my ID to GU 13 by 1200 by 3000. Here, I have a screenshot of where the ID will be shown. Finally, I'll set the board height and width to 1200 and 3000 millimeters respectively. Then I'll click OK. These settings here are most easily modified after all the layers have been created. So next, I'll just add a new layer after the gypsum boarding. This layer will be interior studding. I'll again create a new layer, this time based on framing. The framing type means that horizontal planks will be created at the top and bottom of the wall, like this. The layer ID will be studding 42. I'll set the ARCHICAD layer to be A of studying interior. Next, I'll skip ahead to the material section, where I can choose what kind of planks the studying will be made of. 
These materials come from the Archiframe Blocks XML file. It is also possible to add new materials yourself. For this studying, I'll choose 42 by 42 mm planks. Now that the material is set, I'll go back to the layer thickness and set 42 mm for that as well. The spacing refers to how far apart the studs are. I'll set 600 mm for that. The spacing tolerance determines how much a stud's position can differ from the spacing rule before an extra stud will be added. So if the spacing tolerance is 10 mm and the stud is placed more than 610 mm away from its neighbor, an extra stud will be added. The Z offset will move the layer from the interior of the wall towards the exterior, or vice versa. Here is a picture to make this more clear. So the framing on the left side has Z offset of 0 and is located at the exact same position as the wall element, which is shown in wireframe. The framing on the right has a Z offset of 0 0.05 meters, so its position has shifted 50 millimeters from the element. For this layer, we'll set 0 for the Z offset. The rotation angle refers to the rotation angle of the timber pieces the wall is made of. Here is a screenshot demonstrating the difference between rotation angles 0 and 90. Both of the walls are made up of the same material, but in the picture on the right, the materials are just rotated 90 degrees. In our case, the rotation angle doesn't make a difference since our planks are 42 by 42 millimeters. Here it would also be possible to set different materials, rotation angles, and Z offsets to the top and bottom pieces. But we don't need to do that for this studying. So now we're finished with the studying and I'll click OK. Next, let's move on to the framing layer. I'll again add a new type based on framing. This time, the layer ID will be wall 42 by 173. I'll set the Archicad layer as AF Planks exterior. The material of this framing will be 42 by 173 millimeter planks, so the thickness will be 173 millimeters. I'll set the spacing to 600 millimeters and the spacing tolerance to 10 millimeters. The Z offset and rotation angle don't need to be changed and neither do the parameters for the top and bottom plates. So then I'll just click OK. Now I'll create the next layer, which is wind boarding. This layer is based on boarding and I'll set its ID to wind 9. I want the boards to be created on my AF board exterior Archicad layer. And I'll again set the diagonal line display option on. The board thickness will be 9mm and I'll set 1 to both board overlap and boarding strategy. The board type ID will be wind 9 by 1200 by 3000 and the width and height of each board will again be 1200 millimeters and 3000 millimeters. Now this layer is also finished and next we'll create a layer of vertical studding. This layer will be based on vertical airstrips and we'll call it air ver 1 22. Let's add the studding to the Archicad layer AF studs external. The material for the studs will be 22 by 50 millimeters. So the layer thickness will also be 22 millimeters. With these planks to opening settings, I can add extra planks around openings. Here's a screenshot of what the different options do. Basically, planks can be added either below the opening or beside the opening. I'll set 1 to planks to opening sides and 0 to the horizontal planks, and this is the result that we're going to get. I'll set the stud spacing to 600 mm and the spacing tolerance to 20 mm. This time we're going to set the rotation angle to 90. Here's a screenshot that helps explain why. 
So we have 22 by 50 millimeter plaques, but we want the longer side of the plaque to face the outside or inside of the wall, as shown on the picture on the right. So instead of creating a new 50 by 22 material, we can just use the 22 by 50 and change the rotation angle. Because of the rotation, we also have to change the Z offset to one half times the material thickness. Here is a screenshot showing the result. So the left picture has no Z offset while the right one does. And the right one is the result that we want. Now this layer is finished and we're ready to add a new one, which will also be vertical airstrips. This layer is actually identical to the previous layer, so we could just use the previous layer definition. However, let's still make a new layer since we might want to later change this layer into horizontal airstrips in case we want the house to have vertical cladding instead of horizontal. So now I'll just fill in these settings again in the exact same way as before. Finally, we've reached the cladding layer. This layer will be based on paneling. I'll set the layer ID to paneling 23 by 135. And then I'll set the Archicad layer to be AF cladding. I'll set the panel's thicknesses to 23 millimeters and choose the panel horizontal in out as the profile. The panel profile comes from XML settings, and you can contact us at Archiframe if you need to change it. Now the only thing left to do is to set these settings for all the different layers. Let's start by defining which layer is mainframing. This has to be done first, because some of the other layers follow the mainframing, so the mainframing affects their definitions. I'll open the wall layer and set its type to mainframing. Now I'll set all of these settings for all the other layers, starting with gypsum. I'll first set an anchor for the gypsum layer's front side. The anchors help you place the wall in the correct spot. If you have an anchor on the interior side of the gypsum, for example, you can then place the wall by clicking where the gypsum layer should be. For example, like this. Then I'll set the type for the gypsum, which is boarding interior, and I'll make the gypsum follow the main framing. What this means is that the edges of the gypsum boards will be placed wherever there are wall studs in the main framing. I'll show you the finished wall to make it more clear. So here we have the main framing. And this is the interior studding, which follows the main framing. So the studs are always located where the main framing is. And here we have the gypsum board, which also follows the main framing. So you can see that the edges of the boards always coincide with the main framing. Next, I'll set an anchor for the interior studding's front side. I won't set an anchor to the back because the spacing between this layer and the next is zero. So the next layer's front anchor will be at the same positions as this layer's back anchor would be, making the back anchor unnecessary. The interior studding has type studding interior, and it follows the main framing. Then we'll move on to the main framing. For this layer, I'll add two anchor points, unlike for the others. As we already saw, its type is main framing, and it doesn't follow any other layer. Next up is the wind board. I'll again set an anchor for that. The wind board has type exterior boarding and follows the main framing. Then I'll set an anchor for the first exterior airstrip.
It has type exterior studding and follows the main framing. And then I'll just do the same for the other airstrip layer. And finally, we've reached the cladding layer. I'll add an anchor for the cladding and set the type to finishing it exterior. The cladding doesn't follow any other layer. Now I'll zoom out my screen and show you the result. Before placing the element, we could set up textures for the Archiframe objects that will be created. This can be done by opening the ARCHICAD object menu. Notice that I have no selection active when I open the menu. Another thing that's important is that these textures won't be applied to existing ARCHIFRAME objects, but only to new ones. So this is the ARCHIFRAME library, and you should be able to find it in the linked libraries. You cannot set default textures for different object types because ARCHICAD does not support that. Instead, if I set, for example, a yellow paint for the planks, the ARCHIFRAME elements will have that texture too. Boarding is not affected by these settings because ARCHIFRAME automatically gives boards a checkered texture. Then I'll place the element by line in the floor plan view. I'll choose the interior of the framing or core layer as my anchor, just to give you another example of an anchor point. Next, I'll create planks. Let's look at the result in 3D. So here you can see the interior gypsum board. And behind that, we have the interior studding right here. And here's the main framing. And then we have the wind board and two layers of vertical airstrips. And finally, the exterior cladding. So we have all the layers and we also got the texture we wanted.